Well, hello, everybody. Uh, happy Christmas. We're simply having a wonderful Christmas time, as you can tell by my attire, as well as some of my other co-hosts. Uh, you know, we all want to uh, want to be Santa Claus, but uh, ultimately, <laughs> give us love, give us peace on Earth. All right, I did it. Okay, uh, <laughs> I got all four in there. Welcome to the last Talk More Talk of 2019. I uh, can't believe it um, that we've come to the end of another year. Uh, this will be our uh, you know, last show until January. So what we like to do is talk about uh, our favorite releases. Um, you know, things that came out this year that were particular highlights. And we also want to share our wish lists for 2020, things that may already be in the pipeline, but we also will share our, our fantasy uh, wish list for what we want to see next year. So we've got a uh, big, uh, big show. So uh, pull up a chair and get some eggnog and, and uh, we'll start the show. So uh, before we get to our main topic, let me uh, introduce all of us. I'm Kid O'Toole. I am the author of Songs We Were Singing, Guided Tours to the Beatles' Lesser Known Tracks, and Michael Jackson FAQ, All That's Left to Know About the King of Pop, and I write Deep Beatles, uh, that column for Something Else Reviews. And I'm so thrilled to... Uh, you know, host this, uh, be on this show every week with such good friends and knowledgeable colleagues here. So uh, we'll start with, uh, you know him from uh, YouTube, his very popular YouTube channel, Mean Mr. Mayo, where he does reviews, he talks about collecting, uh, and he has a good amount of comedy thrown in there. So, uh, <laughs> so happy holidays to Joe Mayo. Hey, Joe. Ho, ho, ho. Hello, Kit. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much. Great to be here, and uh, I just happened to have this hat sitting on the side when I saw a couple of people wearing it. Um, <laughs> you know, so I just dragged it right out. Absolutely, this here. is this is the time to do it. Get out the ugly sweater, get out the hat, and <laughs> absolutely. Uh, next, uh, he is the co-host of Two Legs, which is a Paul McCartney podcast, and uh, and that uh, had a lot of uh, changes this year. A new co-host, yeah. and it's now video cast too, as as That's well right. uh, as audio. So uh, so Tom Hanyati, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Kit. Ken and Mayo, Merry Christmas to you two, and uh, likewise, yeah. my friend. Yes. Hmm. Don't Absolutely. tell the wife, but I spent a lot of money this year. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and last but most definitely not least, I uh, we all know him from his long-running syndicated show, Every Little Thing, and I think many of us watching and many of us on the screen were were greatly influenced by the show. Uh, he is also the co-host of the very popular podcast, Things We Said Today. So uh, give it up for uh, Ken Michaels. Merry, Merry, Ken. Merry, Merry. Lift the glass. <laughs> Don't look down. Yes. <laughs> hi, Tom. Hi, Joe. Hi, hi, Ken. hi Ken. And hi, hi Ken. everybody. Happy end of the year and uh, ding dong, ding dong. <laughs> 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 Absolutely, and uh, and thank you, Jack uh, Jack Sutton of, of viewer says we look fabulous. Thank you, appreciate <laughs> I appreciate that very much. Uh, thank so, you, Jack. Nice. thank you, thank you, and uh, welcome to you all. And uh, we are going to want you to share your favorite uh, releases of the year and your wish list. But before we get to that, hold on to to those uh, those thoughts. Uh, as always. We have some news. So, uh, Ken, what's been going on since we were last together? Well, since this is bi-weekly, a lot can happen in two weeks. So um, I'll get to as much as I can right now. First of all, Yoko Ono sent out a message to the fans on the 39th anniversary of John's passing on December 8th that read, The death of a loved one is a hollowing experience. After 39 years, Sean, Julian, and I still miss him. Imagine all the people living life in peace, Yoko Ono Lennon. Well, Some really very nice she, words. Yeah, yeah. I'm really happy she added Julian to that. That's really yeah. Nice. yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, it's nice to see that Julian is involved with, you know, projects like one of one of them we're gonna mention here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe it should be for most of us 
one of the highlights of 2019. Uh, both Netflix and Gaumont are partnering with Paul McCartney in the production of his new animated film, High in the Clouds, based on Paul's children's book from 2004. And Paul is quoted as saying, we are thrilled to be partnering with Netflix. They complement what is already an amazing team with Gaumont, and we can think of no one better to be working with to bring our film to a global audience. I've always loved animated films, and this is a hugely important passion project for me. I can't wait for the world to see it. Now, I did contact somebody at Netflix about this, and he told me that this is only in the early stages right now, so it's going to be a few years before we see it. No. But between this and It's a Wonderful Life, those are yeah. two projects that we know about that are in the pipeline right now with, with Paul, in right. addition to anything else that he's involved with. Hmm. Something that has been reported before, but uh, Paul McCartney talked about it on The World at One on BBC Radio 4 last Thursday. It's a Christmas album that he made a few years ago that he brings out and plays strictly for his family. He described it as something traditional, simple, and easy, a Christmas carols record. He's got a little demo of it, and his kids and now his grandkids like it, but no, there are no plans to release it. Mm. So why does he keep bringing it up? <laughs> <laughs> it could be like McCartney 3 or something. Yeah. Yeah. McCartney 2 was just for his own amusement and wound up being an album. There you go. Right. His friend said to him, I guess that's your next album. Mm -hmm. He said, well, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> Uh. All right, uh, more news here. The Beatles company, Apple Core Limited, and Sony Music's The Thread Shop have signed on to a licensing agreement for Beatles merchandise in North America. The first wave of projects include Beatles holiday sweaters. Maybe not as nice as the one the kid's wearing, who knows? <laughs> or maybe it's one of them. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Hats and scarves, and also tree ornaments plus albums, coffee mugs, books, totes, socks, turntables, and even a Beatles pinball machine. And Harold Law, head of the Thread Shop, said that they have a lot of licensees and certain categories like home, apparel, toys, and kitchen items that are covered. But one area they're exploring is higher-end apparel. Going on right now through December 22nd is the first ever Beatles pop-up shop happening in Soho. It's at 163 Mercer Street in New York City, giving you the first glimpse of this merchandise and described as very interactive. Okay? So yeah, I've seen you pictures. Which... Yeah, I've seen yeah. pictures of that store and it looks uh, looks phenomenal right. if you're yeah, if you're in the New York area, you really should go see I'm it. I'm in the New York area. The question I have <laughs> is, is the store is the store itself going to be there a long time just that this Please certain merchandise they're running is going to be two weeks or what, I just is... I just think that it's been leased up until the twenty second. I think no. it's temporary, mm. you know. But um, you know, I would definitely, you know, if any of you, especially you, Joe, if you want to go and uh, visit and give us a report, if I have any free time, I'll go. try to visit it. But it I should try really to shoot a video there. Yeah, should do yeah, that. absolutely. Mm, that'd be a cool idea. Okay. Yeah. Something to think um, about. Last Friday, Ringo Starr and wife Barbara Bach attended the Global Citizen Prize Gala at London's Royal Albert Hall. Also on Friday, in concert, Harry Styles, one of the biggest names going on right now, performed Paul's Wonderful Christmas Time in concert. That was at the LA Forum. Don't know if he's doing it at all of his concerts, but it's cool that he's covering it. Some very sad news on the passing of legendary percussionist Emil Richards. Emil specialized in playing the vibraphone, marimba, and exotic Eastern percussion instruments. Beatle fans will recognize his name appearing in several of George Harrison's albums, including Dark Horse, Extra Texture, and George Harrison, the one from 1979. He played on the title track to Dark Horse. He's also on It Is He, J. Shri Krishna, as well as uh, playing the marimba on Cracker Box Palace. Emil also played on George's uh, 1974 North American tour. Right. Richards recorded with many pop and jazz greats and played on numerous film soundtracks, including some uh, from uh, John Williams movies. Yep. Hmm. All right. Uh, Julian Lennon 
said some very nice words about someone else that just passed away. And that is actor Danny Aiello, known for being in the films Do the Right Thing and Moonstruck. Mm -hmm. This was on his Facebook account. He wrote, so very sad to hear of the passing of an old friend of mine from my New York days. Mm -hmm. Danny, you were always such a gentleman, a good man, and had such a loving heart. May you rest in peace. My sincere condolences to his family and friends. And a good friend of ours, Charles Rosney, who for many years has organized Beatle trips to England. He's put together many fan conventions and also ran the Beatle fanzine Good Day Sunshine. Well, he had Danny Aiello perform for a Beatles 50th anniversary of when they arrived in America. There was a show that was at the Apollo Theater in New York City, and Danny was there on stage. He took part in it, and he sang Let It Be mm -hmm. on stage. Nice. Speaking of um, Julian, on his Instagram account, he has posted a few excerpts of songs for What's to Come, he said, in 2020. And they will only be on his account for a little while. So hopefully, a new album from Julian. Fingers crossed for that. And uh, we have more information on Julian being on Joey Mullins' upcoming album. Joey's new album is being produced by Mark Hudson, but it will have as many as three songs with Julian on it. And Steve Holly, the last drummer in Wings, also plays on it, as does the great Beatles artist, Shannon. Wow. Since we're talking about Lennon's here, yeah, Julian being very active. i really psyched if he puts out a new album, because it's been like, uh, I think 2013 might have been when Everything Changes, his last album came out. Mm. So speaking of Lennon's, how would you like to go on a cruise <laughs> with the Claypool <coughs> Lennon? Delirium. Wow. Which of course includes Sean Lennon with Les Claypool. The band will be headlining the Jam Cruise. It's being called Jam Cruise 18, which runs from January 7th through the 12th. And it's uh, beginning in Miami, Florida, with stops in Oshase, uh, the Bahamas, and Costa Maya, Mexico, before returning to Miami on January 12th. If you need more, more information, or for tickets or artist lineups, you can check out this website. It's jamcruise.com. And um, I do have one last item here, and that concerns Harry Nilsson, who apart from a new album that just came out called Lost and Found, which is said to have the last songs that Harry worked on and produced by Mark Hudson. Um, I just heard that Harry's 1974 album, Pussycats, which we all know was produced by John Lennon, has been reissued in Japan, and it has, get this, nine bonus tracks on it, including demos and alternate versions for songs, also radio spots done with Eddie Lawrence. Uh, John's composition, Lucho Mungo, was on that album, but there are no bonus tracks for that song. Mm -hmm. But if you are interested in this new reissue of Pussycats, you can find it at discogs.com. That's D-I-S-C-O-G-S dot com and enter Harry Nilsson Pussycats. Okay. Hmm. That's oh, it wow. for the news. Yeah. Cool. Wow. Um, cool. I'd like to add one. Um, if you go to Paul McCartney's YouTube channel, there appears to be a cleaned up version of the Wonderful Christmas Time video, whether oh, it was yeah. re you know, remastered or um, there was some kind of a cleanup project on it, but it just, it's cleaner than I've ever seen it before. Yeah. Better, better looking than what it is on the McCartney years and on the McCartney two archive set. So if you haven't had a chance, go over to his YouTube channel and check it out. It's really nice. Yeah. I have seen it. It's much sharper. Yeah. Oh, much but better. Yeah. yeah. So I wonder if they put some kind of restoration into it, you know, but uh yeah, I mean, that'd be cool if he did that on a lot of his videos because a lot of them are in some bad shape, you know. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. When I saw that version, I thought, wow, that I never realized saw that other one, you know, the other version was so, you know, faded and right. cloudy. And yeah, so this is this is way, way better. Yeah. I agree. Right. You know? All right. 
so that's that's all the news that's fit to print. All right, sounds good. So let's get to our main topic. Now, as I said at, at the top of the show, we are talking about our favorite things, um, the our favorite releases that came out this year. And as I mentioned, we want you to share your thoughts too. Just keep it to things that came out in 2019. If we expanded it to longer uh, I think we'd be doing this show for at least a week, you know, so, <laughs> right. so we'll, we're just going to, you know, have our focus on, on 2019. So, uh, so as we uh, share our favorites, of course, please feel free to share yours. So, um, Joe, let's, let's start with you. What, what are a few of, you know, what were some highlights for you? This year? Well, you know, as, as I was going through them in my mind thinking, okay, what, what did we get in 2019? One that leapt out at me the most was Paul's Amoeba gig. Uh, wow. I mean, we've heard Paul live a lot. That's become, though, already maybe my favorite Paul live album. I mean, other than, uh, you know, Wings Over America, but, uh, he, he, you know, just his voice is in such great form for mm -hmm. that. And we're talking, I believe, it was 2007, right? right. That's with the memory almost yeah. full. Um, just... All, all good renditions of all the songs here today, really emotional. You know, he, he loses it sometimes when he does here today, but it's really touching that one. And he says, hey, it's okay. It's okay to cry. You know, mm -hmm. kind of like broke down a little bit. But, I mean, what a performance. And the band sounds so good. It's an intimate setting. Um, I honestly, oh, I did not expect it to be that that, that uh, I don't know incredible to me you know I mean I knew I would enjoy it plus there were extra tracks that you didn't hear before uh, with the mm -hmm. releases that had come out on it so that's that's the first one that really hit me and now the other one is is fairly recent and we talked about this on the show Ringo's latest album What's My Name uh, if I was surprised by Amoeba Gig from Paul I really was blown away by Ringo's album because, you know, I mean, I like Ringo. I'm a Ringo fan. Uh, hey, Tom's got everything ready there. <laughs> yes, we have show, <laughs> it, we have show and tell tonight as well. Good work. Um, but I, I had no idea that I was going to, me personally, I was going to like it as much as I did. You know, I liked the last one, Give More Love. Uh, one before that, Postcards from Paradise, to me, was kind of average. It had its moments. Um, but I, I don't expect to be knocked out by another Ringo album, but it was just so up-tempo, upbeat, rocking, uh, good performances on it by everybody, consistent all the way through, pretty much. Eh, aside from one or two songs. You're looking for some people's, I see Fred Velez has some stuff on there, too. Mm -hmm. Maybe I get some ideas to save me. To add <laughs> no, no. And, and one more I'll say, which is kind of, might be strange for people, but the movie Yesterday... That came out. Wow. Um, you know, it's not the Beatles, you know, but uh, it's themselves. But really good for the summer. I had a great time. Saw it like four times in the theater. Uh, my girlfriend and I really enjoyed it so much. That, not that it was a great movie, but it just was the right thing at the right time. And my girlfriend and I made it like a special uh, movie that we enjoy seeing together. And, you know, I got the Blu-ray now on it. And those are ones that I'll just uh, single out. I may put, it, put in a vote for John's, uh, the documentary Above Us Only Sky, just to yeah. give John a nod, too, which was uh, nice. And uh, I thought it w one thing I liked about that, I remember. Uh, <laughs> Tom, <laughs> Tom's good. Uh, I, I liked, you, you know, you could really see that, you know, the people who were against Yoko, and there were always a lot, you, you could really see in that particular documentary how much you really felt for john i thought i thought it really came across nice and that maybe even those people who thought it was kind of dubious in their minds maybe had a, a, a second thought on it mm -hmm. so i like that yeah absolutely and you know and going back to uh to yesterday um i that was such a, a surprise to me too because it was i mean that was really a surprise hit i mean it was uh you know i mean i knew it had, i mean obviously it would make something but i mean it really was amazing that you know a lot of beatles fans i mean they just came out in force <laughs> to go to the theater on open you know on opening night and and you know it was such a, a buzzed about 
uh, movie, and and that was you know as I said, such a surprise hit for uh, for the summer. Mm -hmm. It did pretty well yeah. considering. Yeah. yeah, by its second weekend, it it uh, was start. It was in profit mode, so it uh, mm -hmm. it definitely did do well. I mean, and like like you, Joe. I mean, a lot of people did go see it. You know, more than once. So it had legs, you know, you know, people were going and uh, it, it's definitely pulled on some heartstrings here and there in the movie, you know, especially the Lennon scene. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that scene uh, is an incredible scene. Uh, big really screen, was. especially. Uh, yeah. It's very touching. Yeah. I enjoyed, yeah. I enjoyed seeing the reaction on Facebook from from fans and some of them loved it. Some of them just didn't get it. You know, they, yeah, they couldn't yes. grasp the idea. Like I said, when it first came out, it's very Twilight Zone-ish, you know, mm -hmm. in a way. And, uh, you know, how would you react to a world, you know, if you woke up one day and the Beatles never existed, but you had all the songs in your head? It's yeah. just a, a really cool idea. Um, of course, a lot of people debated whether or not if that was to ever happen, what makes you think automatically those songs would work today by a new mm -hmm. artist? You know, right. some people well, yeah. question that, but you know, the, it had a lot of twists and turns in the movie. I love the acting in it, and that scene at the end is, you know, uh, a real tearjerker with the with the John Lennon character. Yeah, but, um, yeah, I, I definitely enjoyed it. I completely forgot about yesterday. <laughs> I, had I, thought, I thought too. Like, I thought there might be yeah. a chance that that wasn't on everybody's mind too. I threw that one in at that too. I thought it might be different too. I mean, I, it was one of my favorite experiences, uh, you know, releases of 2019, but I thought, well, maybe nobody else will have that one. So, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah. Ben, you probably got 10 copies back there for giveaways, don't you? Me? No. <laughs> I never got any. <laughs> oh, you didn't? Oh. No. No. Oh, no. Oh, wow. Yeah. No. But, uh, but yes, it's, uh, that was, I said, that was a, a real, you know, a, a surprise, uh, kind of a surprise hit, and uh, and you know the premise was interesting, and uh, yeah, that that scene. Even though I I kind of had an idea from what people had said. I mean, I was telling people, you know, don't tell me, um, but I definitely inferred, you know, what it was going to be. Even that, with that, when he opened the door. I, I just, it was like, mm. I just, you know, go. That's right. Wait a minute now. My memory is starting to come back to me from when we did our show on yesterday. You were the one, Kit. You <laughs> were the one that said, hey, okay, you know, funny friend, check. Uh, oh, yeah. Lady <laughs> check. It's all coming back to me now. Yep. That scene, I mean, that that scene was, you know, the, the, the one I'm talking about, it, I'm yeah. trying to be a little bit vague in case there's anyone watching who hasn't seen it, oh, wow. but, um, but but, I mean, probably you have by this time. But uh, yeah, that was interesting. But yeah, that's that's true. I was not among the, the biggest fans of this movie, but it was, you know, it was really uh, really popular, really touched a lot of uh, fans, and and so yeah, that was a, a definite you know highlight, uh, absolutely. So, hmm. all right, yeah. Tom, how about you? What uh, what right. are you? Well, well, as I look at. Uh my uh, guest bed over here and everything that's on it. It's just really hard to pick, you know, <laughs> the top three, but, um, but I'll give it a, I'll give it a go here. But um, one thing that I've always been a, a huge fan of the rock and roll, I mean, the Rolling Stones rock and roll circus, um, you know, just, uh, you know, it's really cool, you know, to see all the groups involved with, you know, the who Jethro Tull, you know, Marianne Faithful and, um, uh, Taj Mahal, which who I'd never heard of before, went until I saw this, and and his band at that time was just superb. But you know, to see Lennon play with other people was just kind of like you know really weird to see that for the first time. You know, because um, I hadn't seen I don't think I had seen Live Peace in Toronto yet either, so I didn't really get I didn't really see him play with any other you know musicians up until uh, until I saw the circus for the first time. Um, so I really, really like that for this, but this is also important for another reason. And Kit, you know, this is where John first met who? And, uh, oh, Alan, 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 Alan Klein. Klein. Yes, this indeed. The first time John Lennon met Alan Klein was during the, the filming for, for the Rock and Roll Rolling Star, the Rolling Stones Rock and Roll Circus. So I found that to be pretty interesting. Um, if that never happened, who knows if uh, you know, Klein gets his foot in the door. 
Yep. Um, another thing I I really really love book wise. Um, you know, as a you know, as a fan of McCartney and doing a McCartney podcast, you know, anytime that I can see or see any kind of photos from Paul's you know past, you know, I'm I'm all about it. Um, this book, the Linda McCartney um, Polar, Polaroid Diaries, just amazing. If you haven't you know scroll through this there's a lot of incredible you know images in here um i posted some on you know on my two legs uh facebook page but um a lot of really cool a lot of really cool photos in here i'm going to show you one right here i'm sure this one's been seen a couple times but i don't know if you can see it but it's george harrison george martin and paul mccartney um you know pretty really cool um, I should have highlighted a few of my favorite pictures in here because there's a really cool one of, of James hanging from a bar in the air. Well, he's probably like three or four years old. Uh -huh. And he's just got this look of fear on his face while, while Paul is just, you know, has his arms out just in case he falls. But, um, but that's pretty cool. Um, and if you listen to Two Legs, you know that I'm just, I've been all in on uh, Egypt Station. So all of the you know whether it's the suitcase which i have put away i'm not going to bring that down tonight but uh whether it's explorers <laughs> edition or the you know the Tom, was the suitcase was it, excuse me was the suitcase yeah. this year uh 2019 or yeah, was that 2018 yeah, yeah, no it was oh. it was this year it was uh -huh. this year uh, i think that was april or something or may or something like that but then a couple mm. months later the explorers edition came out Mm. And then you know, a couple weeks ago, we had the uh, Rolling or the uh, Record Store Day 45. So everything Egypt Station that came out this year, I was definitely all about. And um, <clears throat> and because I'm just I'm just all in on Egypt Station. If he releases another edition tomorrow, I'll I'll buy it. I, you know, <laughs> oh, <laughs> what a shock! <laughs> As will I. Too much yeah. of a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> Those are just three. I, you know, I'll have more over here. We can show if we do like some honorable mentions afterwards. But uh, sure, it's just, uh, amazing year. A lot of great uh, solo stuff uh, that came out this year. Um, so it was a good solid year for solo material. Hmm. You know, it's amazing. I forgot yeah. about rock and roll circus. <laughs> In fact, <laughs> I thought I had. I had like. Um, Let's see, 18 things listed here, and I still miss a couple. You know, <laughs> that's it's, still it's, a lot. <laughs> you don't realize until you do a show like this how much right. really has come out in the past year. And excuse me for a minute, guys, yeah. but isn't a Rock and Roll Circus, isn't it noteworthy because this particular, the new release has a version of Revolution on it, even though it's yes. a breakdown? Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. That's the and first time we've heard that. Yeah. There's also another take of your blues on mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Wow. And there's that's a loose cool. jam. You know, right. with Yoko, that's right. on there. So, um, yeah, we have all that too. Wow, that's great. And uh, uh, Tom, uh, Don Mealy said, and and that uh, you and and Don got to see Paul in Arizona in June, and yeah. I was like, oh yeah. yeah, I saw him this year too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great having uh, Don come down from I think uh, was it Seattle? I can't remember now. Um, mm -hmm. Portland, maybe. Uh, I completely forgot. Sorry, Don. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't be mad at me, but uh, yeah, it was great <laughs> hanging, hanging out with him. Took him to a bunch of record stores out here in Arizona, and uh, it was great hanging out with him. That's great. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, Rock and Roll Circus uh, definitely made uh, my list. Uh, by the way, I, I have a Beatles gift guide. I'm sure many of you have seen it already anyway, but it's on somethingelsereviews.com. And, and as you said, Ken, it was just amazing as I went through you know, to figure out what I need to include. And I couldn't believe how many things came out that I initially, you know, forgot right. about. And that, and Rock and Roll Circus was one of them. And so I yeah, was so glad that, uh, you know, I, I, I was reminded of that. So, uh, so you know, yeah. Once yeah. you include audio, video, books, yeah. and concerts, there's a lot <laughs> that happened mm, in the yep. past year. It's very yep. easy to overlook. So, um Oh, yeah. and Don and Don says Portland. Tom. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All um, right. You All know how right. guys forget these little details. Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Ken. How about you? What were some of your highlights of the year? Well, there were ten. <laughs> that I, I felt I have to mention. I'm not going to mention them all at once. Right. But if I had to list my top three, 
and by no means, there's, there's no reason why I'm excluding the others here because they're all wonderful. But I'm going to repeat a few that have already been said. My number one uh, release of the year has to be Ringo's album, What's My Name? Um, I think that in the whole scheme of things with me, nothing compares to a new album of all new material from one of the Beatles. And as long as it's at least a good album, in this case, I call What's My Name a very good album. Um, I'm pleased that I still get excited anytime Ringo puts out a new album or Paul puts out a new album. If there was a, a John Lennon release of all unreleased songs, I would be excited about it. Same thing with George. So mm -hmm. the only one that we've had all year of all new songs is What's My Name. And I do love so many of the songs on there, like the ones that we mentioned a few shows back, you know, uh, Better Days, especially in Magic. And of course, that uh, cover of Grow Old With Me, which I love more now than I ever have. Um, I just love uh, the whole arrangement that was done with that. And of course, Paul playing bass on it too. Um, it's a very solid album. I'm not gonna call it a great album. I think that all the albums that Ringo's done after Mark Hudson are very good. They're all kind of equal to me, but like Joe said, and we said on the show, it's much more of an upbeat album, faster tempo songs, you know, um, not very ballady. So I think a lot of fans really responded to that and uh, very pleased overall uh, with the new album. Anytime we get anything new from, from Ringo or Paul, it's a blessing, you know, I don't take it for granted. That's all that there is to it. It's icing on the cake for me, as far as I'm concerned. You gotta mention the Abbey Road box set. <laughs> I mean, what a major release that was. And I think you gotta oh, right. give credit to, um, yeah, oh yeah. If oh, I had yeah. gotten that one, I'd be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> but, uh, but I automatically go right to the outtakes. I haven't spent as much time admittedly, on the remix, as I have on the outtakes. But those two discs of outtakes are wonderful. I love hearing the demos for something and goodbye. I love hearing all of the um, the orchestration that George Martin did on songs like Something. And, um, you know, uh, it's, it's really an incredible, the, the, um, the Golden Slumbers carry that way at the end, the orchestration on that. You know, it's great to hear all that stuff and all these different outtakes, early takes of even the Ballad of John and Yoko and Old Brown Shoe, which I enjoyed on there. There were a lot of treats throughout, mm -hmm. uh, you know, those two discs of outtakes. And um, all the liner notes were fantastic from Kevin Howlett, the photos in there, the Linda McCartney photos. A lot of, uh, you know, care was put into it, as have the other two box sets for Sgt. Pepper and the White Album. So, um, yeah, how can you not include the Abbey Road box set? And mm -hmm. who knows, after Let It Be, what's going to happen? You know, it's anyone's guess. But for now, enjoy it while we got it, you yep. know? Um, don't take this for granted, because as I've said many times, up until the Beatles anthology, the Beatles catalog was the most guarded catalog out there. And we never got outtakes before. And now all of a sudden, the last few years, we've been blessed with these box sets. So be grateful, you know, while we're getting it. It's, still, I can always ask for more. You know, somebody <laughs> actually sure. posted somebody actually posted the um, isolated vocals for Oh Darling. Not only just Paul's um, lead vocal, but the background vocals. And how wonderful that was. And wouldn't it be great to have more isolated tracks mm -hmm. like that? on no, box sets no. like these. You can always want more, <laughs> as most Beatle fans do. Um, but uh, I'm grateful for what did come out. I think it was a job well done. Mm -hmm. And to repeat something that Tom just said, I'm not gonna call it uh, Egypt Station, Traveler's Edition, and, and all these different editions. To me, it's just the new songs that came out this past year. Mm -hmm. And altogether, if you include, you've got um, Get, Get Enough, Enough. Yep. Frank Sinatra's Party, 62nd yep. Street um, and Home Tonight and In a Hurry, plus the longer version of Who Cares. Um, that's like half an album right there. And I like all those songs, really. I mean, get enough. I'm still a little lukewarm on, but those others are really great. I never, <laughs> as soon as I think about Frank Sinatra's party, it's stuck in my head for the whole day, that song. It's just so damn yeah. catchy. Um, I love all these bonus tracks. And as we're going to talk about in an upcoming show, 
how much Paul leaves off his albums that Absolutely. fans might think is better than what was put on the albums. And we keep getting more and more proof of that with all this Egypt Station material. So those songs were real treats for me overall. And uh, who knows, maybe there'll be another two songs that'll leak out from Egypt Station <laughs> until the next all new album comes out. Who knows? <laughs> And a lot of the fans have been saying, I've seen a lot of feedback in my, in my comment sections and stuff. People are saying a lot of them, they, they like the bonus tracks better than some of the tracks that are mm. from Egypt Station, so, you know. Um, and that's all subjective, of course. But uh, right. I, I can think of a few that I, I would prefer if I was going to switch. But that's the beauty of it. So many times, we talked about this uh, last show a little bit, too. And we always mention, I mentioned, off the ground. I mean, there's so many great... Yeah. Uh, yeah bonus tracks from that that would have been nice on the album and that mm -hmm. paul does that a lot yeah well, i'm telling you off the ground is the king of all of mccarty yeah. albums yeah. where the bonus tracks there's so many of them that should have been on the album mm -hmm. so well, many I, good I, songs I, I mean. i'd say red rose speedway would give it a runs for its money but um yeah. but definitely those two albums probably had you know the most material that could have you know been a double album both of them could have been double album easy Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, the the, the uh, and, and somebody else, and I apologize. It was uh, oh, it was Andy uh, Andy uh, Nichols, I think mentioned. Uh, yes, uh, about home tonight and in a hurry. Um, I I really was shocked when he dropped those tracks because I just yeah I thought the same thing. Why weren't these on? the actual album. I mean, you know, I think I mentioned during maybe it was even the last show, I thought, you know, you, you chose Fa You over this. <laughs> I mean, I, I was a little, thought, oh, gee, I mean, you know, because uh, really Home Tonight, I, I mean, it's it's catchy. Uh, as, as you were saying, Ken, it's catchy. Um, I thought Paul's vocals sounded strong. It was a lot of fun. You had horns, which uh -huh. that's come yeah. up on a lot on our show. We love horns. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, it was just... Uh, yeah, I mean, such a such a nice surprise. And uh, and uh, Ken, going back to what's my name, um, you know, I know we we discussed this on um, on a previous episode, but yeah, that was such a great you know great surprise because I mean mm. we didn't know what was going to you know what it was going to be like, and and I really um, I enjoyed it. Uh, I thought it was a stellar effort, and. Um, you know, I, I can't wait to hear him play those some of those songs live. I think if he does. <laughs> if he yeah. does, I hope he does because I think yeah. they'll work very well. Hmm. Yeah, I, I really do. Oh. So uh, yeah, that was that was a great surprise. Um, so uh, my picks um, are are fairly uh, similar to you guys. First of all, we have to of course give a shout out to our pal Ken Womack and uh, and his book Solid State mm -hmm. uh, story about uh, the making of Abbey Road, which uh, was really interesting uh, his approach because not only does he talk about the, the actual making of the album, the writing of the tracks, uh, but he also talks about the technology and mm -hmm. that's as important uh, in this case as the material because it was of, of course the the solid state console a track recording uh the moog uh, synthesizer i mean there were so many advancements that were used to great effect you know on on this album and so he goes into quite a bit of detail about that uh and so it's it's a really interesting read um on many levels but i i thought that was a, a you know great area to you know, dive into. Um, so that was one for me. Above Us Only Sky, you, you were mentioning mm -hmm. that a little bit ago, Joe, that I, I, that was another pleasant surprise for me. When that, when I heard that documentary was coming out, I thought, what else is there to say? Uh, <laughs> I mean, we have, you know, give me some truth. We had the wonderful book that came out. We had the Imagine box set, well, of course, the Imagine short film. And I just thought, what else is there to say? And it turns out, there was plenty to say, yeah. um, you know, there was some wonderful, um, you know, foot hadn't been seen before some behind the scenes stuff from the imagine uh, video shoot um, people who were, you know, there during the recording. Uh, it was great to see Julian talk about, you know, how he, like, he finally remembers running around Tittenhurst and all, and uh, an expanded version of that conversation that John had with the, the Vietnam uh, the troubled Vietnam veteran. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, there were just so many interesting moments. And, and as you were saying, Joe, that, you know, it really, I think, demonstrated too just how much John and Yoko were, you know, really partners in, in this project. I mean, you know, she wasn't just sitting around and, and watching everything. I mean, you know, she really had input into that album um, from the lyrics of Imagine to, you know, all different things and, and giving input. So it really showed that, you know, they were working as a, as a real, it was a team effort in, in many ways. And uh, so I uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, and I recommend it. If you think you know everything about Imagine, um, do check that out. Um, it's it's a well worth uh, well worth a watch. Um, and there are other other albums out there, folks. By the way, besides Imagine and John. Yes, Cattler, so of course. Everybody knows that. But we'll get to that later. Now we're getting that in the future shows. <laughs> oh, don't worry. We've got we've got plenty more to say about that. Uh, also, it was nice uh, to see Peter Asher coming out with a book. Um, mm -hmm. You know, talk about somebody who's qualified to write uh, write a book about the Beatles. Um, you know, I mean, he's the one of the you know best insiders uh, that we have. So the Beatles from A to Z, a fun read. Uh, it's you know the way it's organized, it's it's alphabetical. But he just like on his radio show, he kind of digresses at, at times, and you know goes into personal remembrances, and all, and I think that's you know what makes it. A charming, not not only informative, which it really is, but a charming book too. I mean, hmm. you know, from it's it's his voice, his perspective, and um, you know, I just I, I enjoy his show on Sirius XM, uh, Siri, uh, Sirius XM, uh, <laughs> and uh, bleh, I can't talk anymore. And uh, you know, I enjoy that. I love his you know uh, background you know, uh, insights about different songs and so forth. So it was great to see it a bit in book form. And uh, so that was another um, highlight for me. And I'm anxiously awaiting. I caved in and ordered the Beatles singles collection because I found a good price on it. So I'm going to be getting that in a couple of weeks. So I'm just going to say in advance, <laughs> that was a highlight too. But I, yeah, there you go. Tom, Tom helped help convince me to get it. <laughs> I saw his unboxing and I thought, okay, you know, I, I think I have to do it. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful, looks like a gorgeous, gorgeous set. So can't, yeah. uh, can't wait. <laughs> yeah. I'd just like to add that I love what you said, kid, about Above Us Only Sky. Mm -hmm. You know, when you think about all that has come out already and you're thinking, what more can, can we learn about the Imagine Sessions? It really helped to have the people who are interviewed in this particular documentary, because not only did you have Julian, which was really nice, yeah. and you got the perspective of what it was like to be at Tittenhurst Park as a little kid at the time, and how John and Yoko treated him at the time, and what it was like, but you had people like Dan Richter, who was John and Yoko's personal assistant. You had Jack Douglas, uh, you know, in there, Elliot Mintz, people like that, as well as some of the musicians. So I think it was a job very well done. Right. You know? So, um, yeah. And the Peter Asher book, it kind of reads like, like he's doing his radio show. It's, yes. it's, it almost sounds like, you know, he's, he's not as much an author as he is just a guy telling you his story. Right. And um, that's what I like most about it. Peter Asher is, is really a fantastic person to talk to. I think he's fascinating because he's very outspoken. Um, I love people who are that way. You know, uh, Elton John is a lot like that, you know, but he's very discreet at the same time. And he was so much a part of the whole story. <laughs> it's amazing when you think about it, the whole Peter and Gordon thing and Jane Asher being a sister, dating Paul and being part of, uh, you know, Apple being the head of a and and then having a, a career as a producer. You know, he's had a tremendous career and he's got so much to talk about. And if you ever see him in concert, it's a real treat, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah, he keeps touring, by the way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, which is a good thing. No kidding. Yeah, it's it's amazing. And uh, and as you said, his candor is always fre refreshing. On uh, 
his show. I love it when he does the, you know, they'll sometimes have the thing where viewer or listeners can vote on their favorite songs and then, you know, and they count them down and all. And mm. once in a while, it just cracks me up. He'll say something like, you know, I don't know why this song got such a high vote, but here it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, it was, like, you know, just throws in his little personal opinion and, uh, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of funny. So, all right. Well, we are getting to, an, I think, what will be a fun it, this has been fun already, but but uh, really fun part of the show, our wish lists. Uh, <laughs> and this is where we can just, you know, everything goes <laughs> of what, <laughs> what we want to see in 2020. So, uh, so Tom, how about you? What, what are some things on your wish list that you'd like to see? Cool. Well, you know, with the Paul camp, I think we're already set. I mean, you know, he, I think we're going to get more color vinyl next year. I mean, he's releasing like four at a time every year. So I think he's going to continue that. Um, I would expect one or two archive sets um, coming out. And we also still don't know if we're going to get the uh, It's a Wonderful Life uh, soundtrack. So, um, I mean, I, with Paul, I mean, as long as he keeps releasing stuff, you know, I don't care what it is, just as long as it's it's something. So uh, I am really curious to see what the next wave of, of, of uh, back catalog vinyl he'll be releasing uh, if he does continue that, which I hope he does. So that would be interesting to see which ones he picks. I'm kind of hoping for maybe, um, you know, as Joe says, I won't say what Joe normally calls the album, but Driving <laughs> Rain. And maybe, <laughs> and maybe uh, Electric Arguments and Memory Almost Full. Um, Maybe the album was right around that time, uh, and maybe even Kisses on the Bottom, um, just to you know put out that period of of, of time. Um, you know, next year we we had uh, oh, let's see, next year will be the 50th anniversary of five solo releases. Wow. I would love to get any kind of 50th anniversary of any of those uh five sets whether it's you know Ringo's two albums Buku's and Sentimental Journey uh All Things Must Pass I think is screaming for a huge mega box set of mm. uh, yes of, of you know 50th anniversary all those you know demos that I'm sure are out there and plus unreleased tracks which were on a uh a uh, beware of uh, Abco, uh, sure. <laughs> you know, <laughs> of all things, um, you know, and I would love to see a, uh, you know, a plastic Ono band type style box set that we got with uh, Imagine. Uh, I think that would be a nice companion piece um, to that. Um, as as the Beatles goes, uh, you know, we're, we know we're getting Let It Be. So uh, just as long as they don't ruin the integrity of the original film, I'll be happy with whatever else, uh, whatever else they give us. I mean, I am looking forward to the new footage or footage that was left out in cutting room floor. I'm, I'm, believe me, I am looking, dying to see that stuff. But please do not ruin the integrity of the original film. You well, know, it, that's, it's supposed to be two releases, though. Two different well, yeah, DVDs. That's what I thought. Well, yeah, but there's I the Peter Jackson gonna, one, right. and then and then they're going to keep the original Let It Be intact the way it was. Uh, I will believe it when it's in my hands. And <laughs> 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 well, I think the Peter. We don't know for sure, but I, I'm guessing the Peter Jackson film. Well, we've heard. I think Ringo said uh, it was. It's not all depressing. You know, they're trying to right. already put a sugar mm -hmm. sugaring on it. But uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, I don't mind. I'm at this point. I'll take anything. Uh, the Peter Jackson version is what I'm really looking forward. I don't mean to cut in yeah. here, but when you think mm -hmm. of it, that's the, the thing is, um, like Ken was saying, as long as we have the original Let It Be intact on, on the mm. side, I don't mind another slant on it, you know, a more positive thing. The show was in all doldrums all the time. That's fine with me. I was just always concerned. I'm saying, gee, are they going to have this replace the other? I didn't think any of them involved, you know, uh, Olivia, Yoko, uh, uh, Paul Ringo, I didn't think they wanted the original Let It Be in any way, shape, or form being out. Right. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm excited about about it about the new yeah. Peter Jackson one. As long as we have the old one, right. too. 
Yeah. Mm. So um, two things that we do know for sure coming out uh, early in 2020, specifically February, we're going to have uh, the point uh, being released in February. Yeah, yeah, very good. Or, you know, the, the new remaster or you know whatever you want to call it, and um, we're also getting Ringo the Fourth from by the music. Uh, both are going to be released in February. Mm. You know, I'm a little surprised at one thing you were talking about there, Tom, because first of all, we should say that one of the biggest news stories of the year was a non-story, and mm -hmm. that is that we didn't get any, any Paul McCartney story. box set of any kind. Right. True. You know, yeah. and uh, at first we had heard the rumor was London Town and Back to the Egg, and then later on it became Flaming Pie, right. and nothing came out. It's true. And, and it's kind of strange because every single year since this archive collection started, um, which was with Bad on the Run, every year we've had one or two titles. Yeah. And, and I was, I'm really stunned. You know, yeah, I, I was expecting yeah. something by the end of the year. But, right. um, and you're mentioning all these other titles without mentioning One in Town, Back to the Egg and Flaming Pie. So I, yeah. I'm expecting one of one or two of them to come out next year. So I, that's why yeah. I did, that's why I didn't mention it because I, I you know, I'm expecting it. I'm expecting it. So uh, mm -hmm. I don't feel the need to mention it anyway. So, I mean, mm -hmm. there's other things that I would like to see as well as those. I mean, he's just putting out so much material that, you know, since 2010 with uh, the, the beginning of the archive edition stuff that, you know, it's, it, it would be hard to see a year where nothing comes out really. Yeah. You know, I mean, he, he gave us the 45, he gave us how many, you know, countless, you know, either station releases, he gave us four uh, live vinyls, you know, we right. got the, we got the Polaroid diaries, we got, you know, and so, I mean, it was, and we got, hey, grand dude, you know, so That's we got, we, we got a lot of McCartney here. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it definitely was a good year for McCartney fans. That's, that's for sure. Um, yeah. And uh, boy, people are all already, uh, suggesting some great stuff we have someone suggesting a, a complete uh set of the beatles cartoons like yeah. the complete first yeah um, i mean if only yeah, yeah. i mean they, that, own the rights. they own the rights to it so yep, it, yeah yeah i know so yeah that that is a a great idea so uh all right ken I know you've got some stuff on your wish list, so. Okay. Um, first of all, with the Beatles, you got to go with Let It Be because we know it's coming out next year. Um, so I'm looking forward to the Peter Jackson film. And um, I don't mind a different slant on Let It Be because the more knowledge we have, the more different audio that we that we hear or whatever's been bootlegged. Many fans have listened to that through the years. More that we see on camera, the more that we'll learn about it. Of course, we're not getting everything that there is. So, you know, they can edit it. They can put any kind of slant they want to on it, but it still is them. And it's part of the history. So you got to just realize that you're not getting everything, but everything that you do see, it's the real thing. So mm -hmm. I, I've always said with all the sessions, it wasn't all misery. And what they've tried to do, certainly with the White Album, is bring that out with all the outtakes, if there was any kind of laughter or joking around, or even with the Abbey Road set, you know, with the, the, the ballad of John and Yoko, John and Paul talking to each other, like, hi, George, hi, Ringo, that kind of thing. You know, you saw their sense of humor. And so it wasn't all gloom and doom all the time. But um, the way to learn the most that you can is to read as much as you can, hear as much as you can, see as much as you can, and you'll get a better perspective of it all. It all has a purpose. Yep. So to have that, to have a remastered Let It Be uh, DVD Blu-ray, and then probably, I'm guessing, a box set with a lot of outtakes. I mean, what more can you ask for as far as from the Beatles as a group in one year than that? John Lennon, um, you know, everything you said, Tom, I was thinking about with the 50th anniversary. It would be nice if the same amount of respect and attention is given to the solo music as it is with the group from Cypher, the White Album and Abbey Road. I'm not expecting it. Um, mm -hmm. I did say last year, because I heard that there has been in the works some kind of release on the one-to-one -one concert. Right. Right. So I'd like to see that all cleaned up because the audio on that was awful when it first came out as John Lennon live in New York City. Uh, the album and the CD, I just never liked the sound of it. That yeah. needs to be cleaned up. There should be something that combines, if they can, the afternoon and evening shows for that. Yes. Put out yes. a CD and a DVD. 
I'd love to see that. And but like you said, Tom, I'd love a uh, you know Plastic Auto Band 50th anniversary. I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, for Paul McCartney, well, I'm always going to say any new music. But, um, <laughs> the archive series, Flaming Pie, or like we've been hearing, London Town and Back to the Egg. If that happens, I'll be happy just for that. But anything that's brand new, as I said before, any new music we've never heard before, it takes precedence over anything old for me. Um, George Harrison comes down to two things, really. I really, more than anything, I'd like to see something on the 1974 tour. Yeah. Um, because of historical importance, yeah. you know. It was the only really full tour he ever did. You know, the one with Eric Clapton in Japan was a few weeks. You know, I know that his voice was not in the best of shape, but for historical purposes, yeah. what else do we have, really? And um, there's got to be something that they can do. I don't anticipate it ever happening. I think the Harrison camp is very sensitive to the material that comes out on George, and they have every right to be. So if it does happen, I'll be thrilled. But if there's anything in the can that I want more than anything else, it's something from that 74 tour. And I'd love to see something on the Japanese tour. But from what oh. I understand, there never was a full concert professionally recorded. Save me something. Uh, <laughs> a few select songs like what we got in that box set on George. You know, there's yeah. some songs like Give Me Love and Taxman that you can see uh, from that concert professionally. And cheer Down, oh. Cheer Down also, which is beautiful. No, right. That's really nice. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, there's that. And I've been waiting ever since Early Takes Volume 1 for Volume 2. <laughs> I'll take another 10 songs yeah. any day, yep. you know. But more than anything, still, you know, if any of this stuff was to come out, I'd be thrilled. But the 74 tour is, is the most important to me. Uh, for Ringo, again, any new music. He just said it's unlikely that he'll make another album. If he puts out an EP with a few new songs, I'd be thrilled. Um, but I would like to see a box set of the Capitol Years. You know, everything from Sentimental Journey through Goodnight Vienna with some bonus tracks on there. Um, that would be nice. He hinted about that a few years ago on Chris Carter's show mm -hmm. in Los Angeles, but nothing has come out on that. But again, like you said, Tom, if there was a 50th anniversary sentimental journey and right. a 50th anniversary Bukus of Blues, I'd be thrilled for that. But I'm sure. not expecting it. But um, yeah, that's it. And and more 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 uh, concerts from Paul and Ringo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. We have a great suggestion here mm. from uh, from Beetle Ed, uh, who said, uh, "How about the Dylan and Harrison sessions? Mm. That'd be sure. interesting to hear." Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you got to get both parties to agree on that. Yeah. So, and, uh, uh, yeah good luck. <laughs> but this is our fantasy list. This is our fantasy <laughs> list. We can. We we're letting our imaginations run wild. So, all right, Joe. What what have you got? What is on your wish list? Well, uh, like like Ken with John starting with John. Yeah, I, I, we we had heard there was going to be a one to one improved version. I thought that. Jack Douglas was supposedly working on it. He did. I had heard. He has. He has been working. Yeah, on he it. has. And and I'd like you know, I, I, as much as I love John, you know, I, and we we have such so few opportunities to see him live. Uh, but I wonder how, how much of it is is the fact that what came out wasn't really you know cleaned up nice, or was it just the performance itself? You know, that's why I think the idea of getting like the two shows uh, together, maybe best of, and doing some kind of work between them uh, might make it more of an enjoyable experience. I mean, just to see John's great, but I, I just thought that it was, you know, it wasn't the greatest performance, if I could say, but I want something on that, something new and improved for, for that. Yeah. Well, uh, you we, know, and the, we talk, the night show was much better than the, than the afternoon yeah, show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, now we talked about uh, Plastic Ono Band, you know, if we're just talking about in terms of 2020, well, that would be an anniversary, just like all things must pass. But I want to see all the, the John Lennon albums, just like the McCartney archives, just like what they did, what Yoko did with Imagine. That's why I was right. joking before. Yeah. I said there's other albums besides Imagine. I'd right. like to see them all get that treatment over time. You know, not, not 2020, obviously, but mm -hmm. over time. Well, and, isn't uh, record, Joe, but isn't I mean, didn't they do some short films during that period of time too? Um, yeah. You know, 
What do you mean? You, it's some experimental. Yoko, John and Yoko, you mean the, the John and Yoko experimental films? Yeah, yeah. yeah Oh, yo, yeah. I don't know how many people want to see him, though. That's the only thing I don't know. <laughs> well, but, you know, it's, it's a debatable point, and I just brought this up about the George Harrison tour. Sometimes you have to weigh, and, and you could say the same thing about uh, John, that you could say, well, George, the number of live performances was so few mm -hmm. in his solo yeah. career that you have to treasure what you got. And because of its historical importance, even the John Sinclair concert, where yeah. John and Yoko did, I think it was only four songs. Everything's important, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so, you know, there are some people who feel that the Beatles as a group, every outtake should come out because yeah. it's the Beatles. No, I don't know. Much. Well, I'm not saying I'd go that far, but because of the fact with John and George that there were so few concerts, yeah, you know, well, that, that, just yeah. put them out. You know, that's just my opinion. Um, for, with George, uh, you mentioned the '74 tour. I, you know, I wonder if there's good stuff there or not. E too, you know, I know that was it didn't go over as well. But um, I was hoping you wouldn't mention the Japanese one because I have something that that I could use. I had that written down here. Uh, I want to see a really <laughs> good. <laughs> that's what happens when you go when you go last, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I wanted to see something done with the 1991 Japan foot, but it maybe. If even if one show wasn't completely done, just make something, some kind of documentary maybe or something that mm -hmm. has a lot of performances. All, almost all the songs maybe they were all re recorded on uh, camera because um, we we have so many nice snippets as we said between Tax Man, Devil's Radio, uh, and, and uh, Cloud Nine the song mm -hmm. and Cheer Down off the top of my head. It'd be nice to have a nice documentary or something. Uh, Ringo. I want to see Ringo's non-vinyl albums come out, ones that have not made it to vinyl as a vinyl collector. You know, stuff like uh, <clears throat> Vertical Man, Choose Love, Liverpool 8, Ringo Rama, those have never been on vinyl. I'd like to see those issued on vinyl. And all, along with VH1 Storytellers, which is a really oh, yeah. mm -hmm. wonderful Ringo show. That's probably Ring one of Ringo's shining moments. I think that's one of his best. I don't think that's ever, unless I'm mistaken, I don't think it's ever come out on home video. Certainly not I'm DVD. Not sure. I, I would have it. Did. I think it did on video cassette. Uh, I have to double check. It's maybe been a on, while. on, on yeah. VHS, maybe. Yeah. Because I, I always play I, the I certainly, CD, you know. Uh, you know, I'd like to see that, you know, a nice, maybe a nice album. I have a CD of it, which is. Is something you didn't tape it when it uh, first came out? Oh, I have a record. I have a recording of it like that, but I mean mm -hmm. officially, you right. know, album right. on a Blu-ray right. or something. Yeah. And for Paul, you see now. Um, again, this is not thinking 2020. This is in general. I was thinking, what's some stuff I'd like to see? I'd like to see the MTV Unplugged complete. Uh, same thing as kind of with Ringo with the VH1 Storytellers. Mm. I'd like to see mm -hmm. that put out from '91. I'd like to see that. Put out, give it a nice uh, DVD official release, and uh, lastly, dare I say, uh, cold cuts type of deluxe box, which he's kind of doing with the archives. He's putting it all yeah. with the mm -hmm. archives. But I still would love would love a, a comprehensive Paul McCartney box with like however many CDs would be in there. Whether there was like fifteen CDs in there or something <laughs> like that of everything all together, all together in one collection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know what he would call it by that time, but yeah, I mean, that's my anything. soul. Be we've, never, cuts. we've never had a real, all comprehensive McCartney package. Mm. No, you know, I mean, pure McCartney, you know, had some really great tracks on it scattered throughout his career, leaving out flowers in the dirt. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, it would be nice for there to be a box set with. You know, stuff that he's already released and maybe a few unreleased songs in there. But I do believe that the way to go are these archive box sets. You make more money that way. It all trickles out a little bit at a time. And um, I think that's how he's going to do it. Yeah, you never know with him. That way. Yeah. Yeah. That way. yeah. Yeah. And uh, oh, and our, our good friend uh, Ed Chen over at uh, When They Was Fab, great podcast, just provided an Amazon link. I guess there is still a copy either of uh, VH1, Ringo, uh, VH1 Storytellers with Ringo. 
Um, okay. It's yeah, right. I'm not gonna. It's it's in the comments. I'm not gonna post the the whole right. link up here. It's it's a long link, but yeah, I mean, so there is something out there, I, I guess. But that but, that was a video cassette. Yeah, VHS. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. There was never a DVD. I would have had it years ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, you know, because Rich. Katwika just said, I'd like mm -hmm. to see a DVD of The Last Wing Store. I was just thinking that, you know, it's been a long time since we've had a live album from Paul since uh, Good Evening New York City mm -hmm. of uh, all the stuff he's done since then. Mm -hmm. And even still, even throughout the 2000s, there are songs that he's done live that haven't come out on CD, mm -hmm. you know, before. So um, we could use a new live one. The sound checks uh, rumor isn't a, isn't a, right. isn't a bad idea. I think right. There's a lot of unusual songs done in sound checks. Yeah, he did hint at that, but yeah. still, you know, it's another thing for history's sake because uh, especially there's a lot of Beatles songs that he's done in recent years that he never did live before, and it's nice to have those on there. Um, you know, it, if you if you follow like uh, for example, the Space Within Us had a few songs in that uh, DVD that weren't released on CD live ever before as a live performance. So you combine the stuff from the 2000s on up and you've got quite a lot of songs there, mainly Beatles, that hadn't been released live by Paul before. And there needs to be something to represent that, I think. Didn't he do English T on that performance? I that was on that with us? Yeah, well, he yeah. did that live, so that yeah. would be in that, yeah. 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 Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, and uh, boy, we've we've gotten a, got some wonderful uh, comments yeah. here. So uh, yeah, wish Apple would watch this; they'd have some great <laughs> uh, great ideas from right from from the fans. Um, I'm I'll just uh, mention a few of them because actually a lot of a, a lot of the stuff I had on my list you've already mentioned, but um, the, um, definitely back to the egg. I. Uh, hoped it was going to be yeah. this year mm. i was so disappointed so i'm hoping next year will be the year they'll finally come out yes. and uh i just you know it's an album that i think has aged so well and needs agreed. to have and so what <laughs> agreed but yes and uh I've... yep ab absolutely and i mean it's aged so yeah, there you go. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and I mean, it, it really needs a full, you know, the full deluxe treatment of, of uh, you know, and here are the outtakes and, and so forth. I mean, I, I would just, I would love it. So that's uh, that's one. I'd also love, I, I was disappointed this year that he, uh, that, uh, he didn't remaster Tripping the Live Fantastic, that mm. he did uh, Paul is Live. Uh, and um, I, I would love to, I, I think, you know, Trip and the Live Fantastic sounds pretty good, but I think with today's technology, I'd, I'd like to see it cleaned up a little bit, you know, make it a little sharper, perhaps, a little, a little clearer sound. Um, and that goes for Live in Japan, too. Um, I, I, and I've seen conversation about this on uh, Facebook recently. A lot of people are saying that they'd love to see, uh, you know, that remastered because it does have kind of, it, the sound on it's not great. Uh, you know, it's a little bit muddy. So again, hmm. would love just to hear a cleaned up version. And also with George, yes, volume two of double takes. Uh, the le volume fixed. one was 2012. We've, yeah, we've right. Waited, yeah, we've waited long enough. <laughs> Come on, I mean, there's maybe that was be. a joke. Maybe that was a sense of humor thing, like uh, traveling where like he's flying free. But <laughs> you know something, guys? I remember Giles Martin did an interview where he talked about working on the follow-up to Early Takes Volume One, mm -hmm. and whatever oh, became yeah. of that. And nobody seems to be asking him about that. They're yeah. always asking about the Beatles stuff, but not about Early Takes. So I don't know why there's been a you know a hold off on uh, on yeah. the George Harrison stuff, but you know that's going to take Danny Harrison to work on that and Olivia's approval, and Danny's always working on his own music, so it's sure. whatever he does yeah. in his spare time, and mm -hmm. uh, you know that's it. Can I mention a few things of what was released this year that I yeah, didn't mention before? Because yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to. Sure, we got a few uh, minutes. Sure. I want to make sure that we don't forget about these. Yeah. Um, the McGear release yes um that was a really nice surprise it was and uh, the sound quality is absolutely fantastic there's a whole disc on there of uh b-sides 
yep. the singles and singles that he released on his own, not necessarily from the Begir period, but it's nice that he put all that on there. And there's yep. also a DVD with a couple of interviews with Mike Begir on there too. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's definitely worth checking out. Yeah. Um, as far as books are concerned, yes, Solid State is a wonderful book from Ken Womack. Mm -hmm. You should pick that up. And um, Ken McNabb put out a really great book called End in the End. And it's yeah. all about mm -hmm. um, the year 1969. Yeah. And he takes you there month by month by what the Beatles were doing during that year. And it makes you aware of how busy they really were yeah. on so many levels, not just working together in the studio, but what they were doing on their own. You know, John and Yoko getting married, Paul and Linda getting married, solo projects, working with other artists, putting it all in perspective and mixing that with the whole business problems with Apple and with Alan Klein. It really was very well put together. I really enjoy certain books like like um, like Ken McNabb's. And I say the same thing about Mark Lewison's book, Tune In, because as I'm reading it, you're going through it all chronologically, you know, either month by month or it's sometimes it seems like day by day. And you all, you almost feel like you're living it with them, you know, when you read some of these books. And I definitely recommend Ken's, the, both Ken's, yeah. <laughs> Ken Womack and Ken McNabb. They both. Uh, you're you're, you're in good company books. there, Ken. Yes, yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> and while we're at it, Ken, Ken Mansfield's book from last year was very good, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So. Don't forget the memorabilia book. If I forget, I forget. I'm sorry, yes. I'm forgetting. Oh, Terry the name. Crane. Terry, uh, Crane, Terry Cr is, Crane. That was another one on my list. Nems and the business of selling Beatles merchandise by Terry yeah. Crane. And I interviewed him, and he's a real joy to talk to because it's all about everything that came out in the U.S. And I mean everything. With details about every single product, who was the manufacturer. You know, whatever the rarest. Such as. I got a Ringo one. I got a Ringo one. He's ready for anything, this guy. I don't want to step up. But it's very thorough. And, uh, you know, what really impressed me about this book is that memorabilia is not a part of Beatle history that I'm really all that interested in. It's always been about the music, studying the music, studying their history, studying them as people. I've never got into the memorabilia side. But with this book, I, I really enjoyed it, you mm -hmm. know, and he's got so many interesting facts about all the different products that came out there, what was cheaply made, what was the rarest items, what's worth the most, you know, and even if I don't really have the desire to own, I never, I never aspired to have a Beatles museum at home. I want a Beatles record collection. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the most important thing to me. But yeah. he makes it so interesting in this book. That's another real treat for the year is Terry Crane's book. Yeah. A um, couple other things too. Yes. Um, uh -huh. White Prairie was a, was a great release for me. Uh, yeah, that, that was, a, that was yeah. a good, first time I've heard that album actually was when I just got it. And I, I really yeah. enjoyed the whole thing. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I know a few people complain about the, the quality of the sound, but uh, we got the, you know, Ringo's wrote a viewer. Um, uh -huh. I, you know, that yeah, reminds me. I gotta tell. I gotta tell. I gotta tell Scott to order Ringo the Fourth. I, for, I forgot. <laughs> I gotta make a note to myself. Yeah, I'll remember I mean, after the show. <laughs> we also got the the reissue of the wedding album this year as yeah. well. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah wow. Really beautiful white vinyl. It's so easy to forget. Was, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I bought it. It's still sealed. Right. <laughs> you just want to keep it intact. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, boy, there were a lot of releases out <laughs> this this year. It's just uh, amazing, and I'm you know we we you know can't cover them all, but uh, but definitely all of these things we've mentioned. Do check them out. Uh, I also, as I mentioned, I have a Beatles uh, gift guide up on Something Else Reviews, and some of the, the uh, ones we've been talking about are in there uh, as well. You can find prices and that sort of thing. So, uh, so, wow, guys, this is this is uh, it for 2019. Oh, Just, uh, it didn't help that a lot of these items had multiple uh, configurations. Exactly, <laughs> that's the thing. You could go through, yeah, the this edition and the vinyl right. edition, and the, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, there's so much out there, but uh, but I think. Um, yeah, I, I think we'll be uh, charging up, uh, running up our credit card bills. I think it's safe to say for the uh, foreseeable future because there's a, there are just some great, great things. So um, mm. before we, we get to uh, 
you know, telling you where you can find us and so forth. I just want to take a minute and just uh, from on behalf of all of us to thank all of you who have put, supported us this year. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we cannot thank you enough. The, uh, you know, the whether you're a viewer, whether you listen to us uh, at the podcast version, um, you know, we can't thank you enough for all of, of your support. We have a lot of things planned for next year, including hopefully at the Fest for Beatles fans in, in New York, but we'll, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll let you in on that as soon as we have more details. But we, uh, we have, uh, you know, we still have some great things planned and also want to thank uh, Joe for joining the Talk More yes. Talk family. Yeah. You, you are have just have been such a wonderful, wonderful addition. And, uh, you well, know, so you. we look thank you all for having me. And, and no. asking me. <laughs> Absolutely. It's been so much fun. Lots it really is, and and you know we're going to have many more shows together uh, next year. That's that's for sure. So, all right, let's uh, let's go around and uh, tell everybody where we can be found. Uh, Ken, why don't we start with you? Okay, uh, you can email me at every little thing at att.net, and you can also check out my website kenmichaelsradio.com. A couple of things I want to mention about the website. Uh, I have my weekly Beatles trivia, as I always do. It's already up right now. There's a Beatle game called Follow Me, where you have to know <laughs> Beatles and solo Beatle lyrics. And uh, you could win. Get them out here. Not as fast as Tom at this. The suspense is <laughs> <Okay>. killing me. <laughs> Peter Ashley's book, which we talked about, The Beatles from A to Z. Ken Womack's book, Yay. Solid State, The there Story of Abbey Road and the End of the Beatles. There's also reach out here. Found a copy of <laughs> Tug of War. I put on uh, my list of uh, nine prizes you can win. The special edition with a, uh, another disc of demos and nice. uh, B sides like Rain Clouds, and I'll give you a ring. You can win that. And since I mentioned Ken Womack and Peter Asher, I interviewed them both, and uh, they're on my website which is on interviews page four, brand new interviews for their new books. You should check that out. Um, this coming Wednesday, the live version of my show, Every Little Thing, which is on WNHU, uh, will be this, uh, it will be at eight o'clock, that's Eastern Standard Time, and it will be actually my 400th show wow. at that station. Wow. I have another big anniversary coming up that I'll tell you about in probably about a month or so. Uh, but my 400 show is this coming uh, Wednesday. You can stream it at WNHU.org. I'll be doing a Beatles happy set. Uh, songs that deal with happy and happiness. That's my thematic set this coming Wednesday. I'm hoping that uh, we'll have a new Things We Said Today coming either this Friday or early next week. We're doing a taping this coming Thursday with a special guest. Okay. And, um, you know, it's been a few weeks. We've been kind of uh, lazy. <laughs> lazy, but it's, you know, it's the holiday season. Everybody's so busy. So, um, nice. but with the cooking and the cleaning, you know, so, um, uh, <laughs> I sneak that in there. Yeah. But, um, a real fan. Yeah. Get, get that. Yep. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, hopefully, hopefully there'll be a new episode Friday or uh, early next week for that. I think that's everything. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah. Sounds good. Every little thing. That's right. <laughs> okay, Tom, how about you? Thank you, kids. Um, Ken, is that a uh, songs we were singing tote uh, bag hanging up uh, behind you uh, by chance? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> hey, songs we were singing tote bag. <laughs> I found the display. did you get that? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Very He's got cool. good eyes. Very He's good. been covering that the whole yeah. show. <laughs> well, two legs. We we you know obviously you can reach us at two legs podcast at gmail .com. We're on Facebook at two legs podcast. They are two legs of Paul McCartney podcast. I should say Twitter and Instagram at two legs podcast. Um, couple, last week we posted an episode about Paul's wonderful Christmas time. You know, people love it. People hate it. You know, we talk about it and uh, we discuss you know why we love it and why maybe some people you know don't like it so we had a lot i don't of think you responded to my comment yet tom i left the no I left the okay i'll have to go back and yeah i didn't see <laughs> it oh, oh i'm sorry, sorry about that did. maybe i didn't see the response yeah, right. but, uh, <laughs> but you can uh, you can 
Right, but you can go to Podbean and check it out there. We're on iTunes, and we're also on YouTube now. So you can go to our YouTube channel at Two Legs Podcast. So we got that going for us as well. I was uh, fortunate to be a guest on my uh, my friendly rival, I should say, is Mr. Sam Wiles on his Paul or Nothing uh, podcast. And we did a really cool show. It was a uh, hypothetical Beatles reunion, 81, 82, uh, if you will. And uh, we talked about, you know, how the band got back together, if there was any stipulations, you know, what would the shows be like, what would our dream set list or what we think they would do for a set list and uh, we had a really good time uh doing that and that's on uh, podbean and itunes as well so that was that was a lot of fun good stuff yes, your, your show on wonderful christmas time was really great uh, oh thank you i really yeah. appreciate that ken thank yeah you. you know andy yeah, sounds just like me sometimes with his comment <laughs> <laughs> he's saying exactly everything that i would say right you know? mm -hmm. cool yeah. glad to hear that thank you all right joe what's going on on uh, your channel Oh, uh, well, the channel is Mean Mr. Mayo on YouTube, and I'm going to be making a video. It should be any second now, either tonight or <laughs> tomorrow morning, because I'm off tomorrow morning. I'm going to be showing what I think is a very interesting Beatles-related Christmas item that's that's new. It has to do with audio. I'm not going to talk about it here. You have to tune in to see what <laughs> it is. I think a lot of you will be really uh, delighted about it, and uh, that's a little surprise. So check out my channel, Mean Mr. Mayo. And and don't say Rudolph. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta I gotta stop those. I gotta stop those rant oh, videos. Oh, they're fun. Too many rant videos. Mm. How do you Are say you... it's Rudolph? There's an L in there, folks. That's I made a video on that. Driving people nuts, you know. Mm. Not Rudolph. Okay. <laughs> Drives me nuts. But well, yeah, hey, look, I look at all the things I mispronounce. Yeah. I still have to work. I still have to work on saying talk more talk. Yeah. Instead of saying talk to what talk. So we all, have, oh, we all have our issues. That's exactly. Oh, my gosh. All right. And as for me, um, you can uh, find me, of course, at kiddotool.com. Um, as I mentioned, my gift guide is up. I'm going to have one more uh, Culture Sonar article for the for the year. Uh, that'll be uh, up on, I think it's the 20th, on December 20th. So as always, check out my Facebook page on I'll... I'll uh, you know, give you all the details as, as soon as the links go up. And also, uh, this coming weekend, I guested on your friend and mine, uh, Joe Johnson's uh, show, Beetle Brunch, and uh, talking about pretty much what we talked about tonight, which is the, uh, you know, best releases of the year. So uh, that goes up on uh, his uh, site, I think, this coming weekend. So, and again, I will post everything about it on my page, and I'm going to have my own uh, show, my monthly uh, broadcast uh, this coming Thursday uh, at uh, the usual time, uh, 6.30 Eastern, and uh, just doing kind of an end-of-the-year wrap-up. So that'll be on my personal page, so just uh, check me out uh, over there for all the details. So... Cool. All right. I think I uh, think that's it. So, oh, and if you want to reach us, almost forgot, uh, you can uh, mm. reach us via email at talkmoresolotalk at gmail.com. You can also uh, find us, of course, on Facebook uh, and on Twitter at talkmoretalk1, number one. So we will be back next month. In, Jan in January, we'll be back uh, January 6th, I believe. If there's any change in that, we'll let you, of course, let you know. Mm. And uh, but uh, so we, uh, you know, we've just had a blast this past year and we look forward sure. to many more great episodes. So for Joe Mayo, Tom Hanyadi, and Ken Michaels, this is Kid O'Toole saying happy holidays, happy new year. Ring out the old, ring in the new. And <laughs> and we'll see you same time next year. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Happy holidays, right. everybody. Take care. Happy holidays. Right.